Hey guys, Shift838 here. I've been asked by a few people that have purchased these IDE do-it-yourself kits from me on exactly how I've been building them. So I thought I'd quickly go through one and in different parts, of course. <clears throat> I'll speed it up, pause, whatever it may be, uh, just to show you exactly what I've done. Um, the first section I'm going to go through explain a few things that I typically have. So of course, you know you're going to solder. A lot of these are service mount, freaks a lot of people out. They're not as hard as they, you know, seem to be, especially for these size service mounts. They're fairly um, a good size to still be able to hand solder. So a few things you'll need, of course, is solder. I got this one on my 3D printed solder stand for the occasional mess up. Some desoldering brake. Some snips. Solder sucker, just in case uh, for some of these through hole components, maybe. This is a big one to have. Flux pin for rework. This one is uh, water soluble flux. It's number 80 by SRA. Uh, I've been using it on all the cards uh, and it works very well. Um, the only cleanup you have to really do on it is I take a, not a paper towel, but it's um, almost like an alcohol wipey that's been dried <laughs> and I just have to buff it. And that's it. And, it. and the film and everything comes right off. So I've taken the liberty on this one where I've already pre-soldered a majority of the surface mount capacitors and resistors. Um, there's a few that I'm going to show how I did it. Uh, one of the things is, let me show you the rework station that I have. So, and I have this set on the lowest airflow level. And then of course my good soldering station. <clears throat> now I forget, hopefully y'all forgive the jerkiness like this. I've actually had to uh, jury rig a box so y'all can actually see what I'm doing. Um, another good thing to have of course is a good set of tweezers. And for the surface mount Resistors and capacitors, I'm using some solder paste. As you can see for the solder paste, I like this one I left undone. I just cover enough of the pads. <clears throat> now all the capacitors on here, they're all 0.1 UF or 100 NFs. And then of course we have various resistors, 220, we have some 10Ks, we have some 4.7Ks, and of course we have LEDs, and uh, I'm going to show you all how to do this late in a later part um, shortly. I'll link to this video. Um, this is the SRAM. It can be tricky because the pads, the footprint is almost exactly to what the um, footprint of the chip is so it's there's hardly any room to really get in there with and I'll show you a couple of tricks so we take a capacitor put it down on the solder paste I typically tap it a little bit I'll do the same thing with the resistor up here this resistor is a 220 ohm, like it says. It actually can move the voltage for, puts it to the right voltage for the LED for the back over here. There's another 220 over here that controls your front LED. This other capacitor, that's for the SRAM. I've also 
pre-staged all of my components that I have in a um, bin, <laughs> separate. You know, each each one is separate, so I can just grab and go. So once you have everything as far as the capacitor zone and the resistors, the best thing to do is I use my heat gun. It's up to, I got it set to 310 degrees Celsius. And with the solder paste, the way it works is that as it heats up, the flux starts moving apart and there's little bitty solder beads inside the paste. And they'll all start coming together. And it don't take long as you can see. Um, I have my fan set on the lowest setting because if not, you can actually blow one of these chips right off the board, which I've done even on the lowest setting. So you've got to be kind of careful. And like I said, I've already pre-staged a lot of these. So once you're done with that, the best thing to do also is go back through and you check. Like, oh, I actually didn't get that one like I thought I did. They usually check them, make sure they're nice and sturdy. You could even hand solder them if you really wanted to. Um, just make sure you don't over solder them to where you where each side's not getting solder and making a connection. And that's it for those. The next step, what I usually do is I'll get my soldering iron. And what I'll typically do is what I want to do is put a solder on a pad to be able to anchor a chip to. And I'll do that on every one that I'm that I need to work with first. So I will typically typically let's see where I'm at. Take a little piece here. It just creates a little solder piece right there. And I'll do this on every one of them. That way, when I go through and start putting in the, the chips, all I have to do is anchor them itself. So um, this is a, the first one, LS132. And it's actually one of the most popular chips on the board. You actually need three of them. And I'm actually having issues with my tweezers. Probably because they're magnetic. And now I got them stuck. <laughs> there we go. So the best thing to do I try to kind of split the difference. That way it leaves enough on either side. And you see you got enough over here and you got enough over here to solder with. A lot of times I will go ahead and anchor a second pin just because I know what I'm going to be doing later. Is I'll be using some flux. To actually get both sides of these, these pins really, really well. I'll go ahead and do this one. 
because then I'm going to pause the video and get all of them done. And then we'll start on the next phase. Okay, flip this around just because it works better for me vertically. And it doesn't take much. And I'll hit that other pin that I used to anchor already just to smooth it out. A lot of times with this chisel tip that I have, sometimes I can hit two pins at the same time. But you don't have to. Flux really works good. Helps smooth the solder joints out real well. Sometimes you'll have enough solder still to be able to hit one and then don't even have to use the solder itself and just hit it with the other tip. And so what I'll do now is I'll go through and I'll anchor everything and then I'll go through and flux and solder everything. Like I said, I'm going to leave the 512K chip alone until my next video, just so I can uh, go through that a little bit more. Um, one thing that I do want to mention is as I solder these chips, you're going to see where these capacitors are, right? These capacitors are always closest to pin one. So that'll tell you your orientation of the IC. So the 512K pin, pin one is going to face toward the bottom of the card. Uh, the same thing with the actual clock chip. It'll face toward the bottom. These other chips, like the 688s, you know, everything else, since the capacitors aren't at the top of the chip, we're going to put pin ones toward the top of the card. Um, and then, of course, the LS245s down here, as you can see, the pin ones will be toward the right of the card as you're looking down. Um, they did that as, I guess, a, the way the card was designed just made it, you know, easier to put the capacitors and, you know, the actual layout of the board itself. Uh, these resistor networks we have here, that's a 22 ohm resistor network, 10K, and then a 4.7K. These are actually isolated resistors. So each pin opposite of each other is just one resistor, just like you had seven resistors in a line. That's all that is. Um, <clears throat> these are very hard to find. I have found some um, for the 10K. Um, I do still have some, so I'll use that in the video. But if you're building one and you did not buy the component kit for me and you're, you're searching for these, you don't necessarily have to have those. Um, you could get a 16 pin. I've done it before. As long as, long as it's isolated, you want isolated and not bust. As long as it's isolated, you could clip off the two end pins and then just move it down. To, as long as the footprint spacing is the same, um, you won't have an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and we will link into uh, no, another video into this video um, after I'm done with all of this.